Hi, I'm Luca, I'm from Demic Design and I want to talk to you through the process of fitting your horizontal onto the vertical. Now this is something we actually already do at factory level, um, just to make sure that uh, the foils go out uh, ready to sail. However, the verticals do vary um, ever so slightly in thickness, so I would recommend that you do this yourself once you get your new foil. And we'll go through the process of actually doing it. It doesn't take very long, it's a quick process, but it does um, help um, longevity of your foil. Uh, particularly because this area here, if it's um, not loaded correctly, it will actually try to pulverize the carbon on this very top edge because the vertical is leaning against that first. So by having glue along the entire surface, it means you spread the load and uh, the foil will last a lot longer. Uh, what you'll need for this is some epoxy resin. Uh, you'll need some scales to weigh your resin. You will then add glue powder mix. This is a high strength glue powder. Um, you'll need some mixing cups, obviously. You will need PVA release agent, which is something you'll put on your vertical to stop the two um, items bonding together so you can take them off later down the track. Uh, you'll need some uh, gloves, you'll need some masking tape, and you'll need some mixing sticks. The first step in the process is to actually go and um, measure your angle of attack. I would start by just placing this onto the vertical and, and just seeing what you've got um, out of the box. And then you can define um, if that's enough or you'd like more or less. Um, then I would use Packers. This is an old credit card that's chopped up. And you can place that either in front or behind the bridge, depending if you want more or less angle of attack. And um, then you can go through the process of actually fitting this once you know how many Packers you will require. Um, so the way we do this is just stand stand all the way that you always do. You just place it onto the vertical, get your mallet out and give it a whack until it stops and what you can do is actually put some masking tape down exactly where this vertical um, meets the horizontal you can see that line there uh, because that tells you if it's all the way in so what I'll do is I'll, I'll pull it apart and then what I would suggest is grab some vernier calipers and just measure uh, this distance in here and the distance in front as well and just make sure that that corresponds with what you've got here that way you'll know if it's all the way in or if it's actually got some way to go. Now the next step is um, to mix your PVA release agent. So here it is. What we'll do is we'll put that on the vertical and then we'll wait for it to dry for about 30 minutes. Uh, the process is pretty straightforward. You can just get some on your finger because it is water based. And we'll just smear it on. Make sure you get plenty of coverage. Turn the foil upside down all the way there. Just be generous with this stuff because you don't want to have too little. Nice and even around the foil. Okay, so we'll leave that for about 30 minutes and we'll come back and we'll do the resin mixing. We'll turn the scales on. It does help to have really accurate scales because then you can mix smaller amounts of resin, um, have less waste and, and it can still go off because it's, um, the quantities are correct. So we'll just mix um, 15 mil of resin. Okay, 15 mils of resin. In this case, it's a 5 to 1 mix, so I'll mix 3 mil of hardener. Okay. So make sure you get this nice and combined, so you keep stirring, scraping the sides of your container. Okay, now that we've got that mixed in, we can grab our glue powder and start adding that on. Now what we're looking for is a toothpaste-like consistency, so you'll add a little bit and just see what it looks like. If I show that. It's, um, it starts quite um, powdery and it slowly mixes in. So I can see it's still a little bit runny. I can see that on my applicator. So I'll mix a little bit more in. Okay, that's the sort of consistency I'm looking for. So I'll try to show you that. It's basically just like that. It's, it's, if I get a big lump, it will stay 
without sagging on your on your stick. So that's what I'm looking for. So once your resin is mixed, we'll move on to the next step. Now this is pretty straightforward. All I'm going to do is apply the resin onto the side of the vertical. And I'll just try to do that relatively evenly, as best as I can. And I'm careful not to actually put any onto the bottom, because uh, it's not required. I'm only interested in the side walls. So we'll do the other side as well. That's it. That's about, as all, that's about all that you're going to need. What we'll do is um, we'll put some on the horizontal as well, just a little bit to wet it out. Um, I'm not putting much on the horizontal, but I do want the sidewalls wet. So when they meet up with the vertical, um, you get a better bond. So we'll just put a little bit there. Again, I'm trying not to put any on the bottom. And the excess will ooze out, so if you do put too much in, it's not too much of a disaster, but you don't want to put um, a ton of your glue in because, you know, some will ooze out, but some will get trapped in there. All right, so we got that done. So now we'll just repeat the process, just like dry fitting. We'll tap it, tap it lightly. Until it stops. Now, once we wipe the excess glue, we'll be able to see exactly where that line is. Now, I can tell that it's bearing against the masking tape, so I know it's all the way in, and that's a good fit. So I'll just wipe all this off, clean off the foil, and we'll do the same with the other side. get all the residue because it's quite hard to sand later so you're better off getting it off now. That's nice and neat. So you'll just let that dry for 24 hours before use. Um, you can at that point peel the masking tape off and your foil is good to go. Just put the bolt in and you're ready to go sailing. So the foils you get from Devic Designs are actually very well fitted as I explained earlier. So this is not absolutely required uh, with every foil. You know, you can just happily go sailing and not worry about this. But I find that it's worthwhile extra step that you can do uh, to make sure that you get that l extra little bit of longevity and making sure that you really have a nice strong bond between the two foils. I also recommend not pulling them apart unless you really have to. Um, so I'll normally leave this um, the way it is and I'll trail with it and sail with it. And then once I'm going overseas, then I'll pull it apart because I have to, but otherwise they stay together.